From the Fed to regulations to DAVs, our next guest is giving us his 23 blockchain predictions of 2023. Joining us now is Andrew Keyes. He's the co-founder and president of Dharma Capital. Welcome, Andrew. So we may not get to all 23 of the predictions, but let's start with maybe some of the top ones. So you believe that the, te- the Fed will turn dovish next year and set the stage for maybe a crypto bull market? What, how, how will that go about? Thanks for having me, Christine. Yes, I think we're probably at a turning point. Uh, We've seen a reduction in the raises of interest rates from 75 basis points down to 50. I think we'll further see a reduction from 50 to 25. Uh, By Q2, I think we'll probably stop rate increases. And we actually may by December, November of 23, see a, a rate decrease. Well, wow. that that's that's I, can I opine that that's quite bold. I, I mean, generally, uh, the the view has been that the Fed has been uh, let's just say behind uh, when it comes to uh, so, so, so uh, I, I uh, dealing listed with a few macroeconomic indicators. We've seen the prices of shipping containers uh, drastically reduce, uh, close to two thousand dollars. Brent crude oil now is down. Uh, below $70. Uh, We can also look, and the Fed publishes this, the uh, amount of credit card debt juxtaposed to savings. And we're seeing credit card debt at notable highs with uh, savings indicators at uh, notable lows. And uh, I think the Fed has done a done a a, a decent job in slowing down uh, this economy. Uh, Focuses now are probably more on wages. Uh, We do still have a strong labor market, but uh, if uh, if we do see continued or increased rates, we will break this economy. And I think uh, the Fed does Mm -hmm. understand that. Well, in the near term, you see that Bitcoin will be facing headwinds and continue to lose market share and that the crypto contagion isn't over yet. So tell us a bit about what might be the next leg downward. Sure. I I, I would say uh, with respect to Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin had every opportunity to act as a risk off digital gold hedge, and it didn't, frankly. Uh, it, 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 it acted as a, a beta on, on risk on tech. And frankly, there is better risk on tech in this industry. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more with Matt Hogan's uh, previous position that uh, Ethereum is poised to be the asset of 2023. If you actually look at developers building onto the networks, uh, Ethereum has run away with it. I, I think a, a very simple analogy that you can use uh, is search. Uh, back in the 90s, uh, Google created the number one search engine, and then there were 15 other search engines that that fought for about 15% of all searches, and Google ran away with 85%. Uh, we're, we're seeing that type of I would say hegemonic position for Ethereum in terms of developer activity, uh, projects being deployed between its layer ones and layer twos. Uh, And and frankly, I I think Bitcoin is facing huge ESG concerns in addition to essentially what I call the pet rock syndrome. All we can do is hold it and send it to somebody else where you're seeing smart contract functionality be the real differentiator. With respect to contagion, uh, I don't think the contagion's over. I, I think there are uh, shoes to drop. There are buried bodies to be found. And, Which ones? Uh, we, unfortunately, uh, your sister company uh, in, in Genesis. I, I, I think that uh, uh, Genesis is probably the next one to drop. Uh, there was over the weekend on, on Friday in particular, uh, notable assets on, on, on the balance sheet uh, of Genesis um, were being sold off and, and they kind of sold off at a, at a, at a harder rate uh, than, than the rest of the market, which uh, if we look at kind of what happened with Voyager and Celsius uh, prior to a Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing, they shored up extra cash. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was what happened on Friday. Wow. 
So, so I guess I'm not getting a Christmas bonus. I, no, but in all seriousness, um, it, when it comes to uh, Ethereum, you know, you, you likened it, uh, getting back to that for a second, you, you likened it to um, uh, uh, Google, but of course there was Yahoo before it. And so you kind of see Bitcoin taking on the Yahoo role, which was sort of this innovator, but then like, oh, you guys are still here. Um, do you, what about the alts? Do, you, do they take on the Alta Vistas and the excites of the world? What, what happens to them? I, I, I think they all need to find their narrative. Uh, and and we, have to, we have evidence and data that we can look to in terms of actual transactions, capital deployed on the network, uh, GitHub repositories uh, that uh, can really point to what is the true usage of these networks. And I think uh, we're going to see a lot of great evidence-based data that kind of can, can show us uh, where uh, we're seeing uh, the majority of, of, the, of the network consumption. And, and, it, and it frankly is on Ethereum and the layer twos. Uh, so, you know, the Solanas of the world, et cetera, are going to have to figure out what their use case is. But more, moreover, uh, Ethereum being the largest developer ecosystem on the planet with respect to blockchain uh, can actually port the best of any of these open source projects to Ethereum. One great example of that was zero knowledge technology. So Zcash was kind of that first flavor of uh, zero knowledge technology uh, being built. And basically the Ethereum community learned about zero knowledge proofs and now has created zero knowledge rollups, zero knowledge EVMs, and we can just continue to see the best of open source technology being ported to the largest developer community.